Yeah, good morning, everyone. Uh, we had seen some corrections in the US market on account of development of uh, quite a few things like uh, oil went up uh, to almost around uh, $123. Uh, that was mainly driven by uh, there is a disruption in supply from Kazakhstan uh, due to weather. And this is not related to uh, the Ukraine Russia war. Uh, wherein uh, the supply will be curtailed uh, from the market for a longer time of maybe around one month of one billion uh, uh, one billion barrel uh, one million barrel and which can which had impacted the oil prices and move, uh, the oil prices moved up very sharply. Apart from that, this the, even uh, uh, the European. Uh, gas prices has also increased substantially yesterday mainly on account of russia asking for the payment in ruble rather than euro or dollar so that has also taken the uh, the oil to uh, uh, to gas to uh, uh, very high, uh, increased very sharply yesterday and this has uh, even impacted the other commodity prices also uh, aluminium in yesterday in LME was up by around 4% and nickel was sharply up over in double digit. So uh, the war is taking turn from uh, just a physical war to more of a, a commodity war as well. Uh, the other commodities uh, like uh, copper uh, was also up by around one and a half percent today morning. Uh, today morning, even aluminum in China is up by around another one percent, and uh, iron ore is up by around uh, two percent, and uh, iron steel was more of a flattish. Asian markets are also seeing some softness, uh, and uh, futures of the U.S. market are also soft. So countries, uh, today even uh, uh, there is a meeting of NATO countries uh, for further actions or sanctions on Russia's. Uh, this can have uh, some impact on uh, the equity market as well. So need to be watchful or careful in the market in today's trade. I request technical team data from you. Yeah, uh, thank you, sir. Good morning, all of you. I see last four trading session, we see the uh, upside emitted resistance around 17,370 and 400 in upper level. Uh, we expect uh, today open a negative note, uh, remain a range bound during the day. Uh, Nifty, uh, yesterday we see the Nifty uh, face a resistance is 100 DMA, that is uh, 17,370, 400 in upside. Uh, downside immediate uh, support place around uh, 17. Uh, that is a 200 DMA. To so expect the Nifty trading within the range, upside range is 17,370 and uh, downside range is 17,000. Uh, today, if Nifty break below the 17,130-150 level, then we expect uh, Nifty go to uh, uh, towards uh, 200 DMA, that's around come uh, 17,000. So today, we expect uh, negative open and may remain a range bound. Next one week, we expect uh, Nifty trading within the, this range only. Bank Nifty also face uh, immediate resistance in 200 DMA. Yesterday also, uh, we see that uh, Bank Nifty trading near the 200 DMA and then uh, close below that uh, 200 DMA. So you can expect uh, some pressure in Bank Nifty also. Uh, today, uh, important support place around 35, 930. Uh, below that level, uh, it's tracked towards 35, 650, 35, 200 at downside. Upside immediate resistance place around 36,600 in Bank Nifty. Uh, Nifty Finance also trading uh, facing the resistance in upper level that is come around 16,700. Uh, below important support place around 16,550 and below that uh, 16,420. Uh, resistance place around uh, 16,714 uh, Nifty Finance. In stock specific, See, market uh, remain a volatile session, uh, one to two trading session, maybe towards monthly uh, Nifty also. But stock specific market looks positive. Uh, first, uh, uh, Loris Lab, we already given this call in Loris Lab last one week. So, uh, that is uh, 530 levels. So, but we expect uh, next important uh, target for 640, 650 and upside. 
uh, at this moment, file 90 is an important support uh, for Loris Labs. Uh, second, UPL also looks positive at current level. We expect positive momentum uh, with the continue. Uh, next important uh, target for 820, 830 and upside. Uh, support place around 7, uh, 780 at downside. Uh, third, uh, G Entertainment looks positive at current level. If uh, G Entertainment break 265 level and upside, uh, that is 200 DMA, then we expect further momentum towards uh, 290, 300 in an upside and support place around 250 at uh, downside. That's it for technical derivatives I can catch. Yeah, thank you, Vikas. Good morning, everyone. As for derivatives of data, we are seeing some sort of negative uh, positions getting happening in the market as per the Y positions. As you are seeing, at 17,300 to 17,500 strike, heavy call right positions got added up while on the downside between 17,000 and 17,100 strike, put right positions got unwinded. So, this is a negative scenario. Once if Nifty goes below 17,000 level, then directly the next support as for the OI lies directly at 16,700 levels. So directly, the currently the view in the market would be range bound because from last two trading sessions, we are seeing that from 17,400 strike in Nifty is giving some uh, uh, selling pressure from 17,400 level and directly market is coming near 17,200 to 100 level. So currently hold a long position with the support of 17,000 strike. Once if Nifty goes below 17,000 level, then some sort of a long portion should be exited because a selling pressure might be witnessed below 17,000 strike. While as per yesterday's session, we are expecting today's session some sort of a cautious momentum in the market. Till the time in today's trading session, once if Nifty goes above 17,350 level, then only new long portion should be created in today's trading session. That's it from the derivative front. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, Canada Pension Plan Investment Board uh, will be uh, selling up to 4 crore shares, uh, which is uh, around 2% stake in Kotak Mahindra Bank through block deals today. Uh, the floor price uh, has been fixed at uh, 1681 to 1770 per share, uh, which uh, translates to uh, almost 0 to 5% uh, discount to Wednesday's closing price of uh, 1770. So, if at all there is a steep decline in the stock uh, because of these, these block deals, then one can look at buying from a short term perspective. Uh, also, yesterday we met uh, a PT engineering company. It's a mid cap capital goods uh, company. Uh, it is the largest steel lamination company in India, supplying to all OEMs like Siemens, GE, uh, Cummins, uh, CG Power, Toshiba, etc. Uh, lamination steel, uh, which is its main product, which it makes, is nothing but uh, silicon uh, is added to steel, which results in increased productivity when uh, that steel is used to generate electricity in various motors. So over the last five years, the company has migrated from selling loose lamination sheets to uh, laminations built in the form of complete uh, motors. Uh, you know, which uh, we can say is forward integration for the company and currently uh, it is not being done by any of its competitors. So this has led to expansion in uh, uh, of their addressable market. Uh, although we feel that the forward integration that a company has done is replicable by competitors, if they commit uh, larger investments and uh, OEMs may take some years to uh, approve, their, uh, approve uh, these uh, newer players. Uh, 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 overall, we expect around 15-20% uh, uh, kind of growth uh, in coming years for PT, and uh, uh, which is uh, slightly higher than other uh, capital goods companies' uh, growth, which uh, others are showing. Uh, one can look at accumulating the stock uh, on declines, uh, uh, possibly closer to where it uh, the recent lows it made at around uh, 220 uh, to 240 levels. Uh, and uh, on the concern side, uh, if the overall industrial capex uh, again slows down, and uh, uh, you know that will result in its OEM clients not gr uh, not uh, growing, so that will uh, obviously impact PT as well, and the performance will suffer. Uh, so that's it from my side. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Sun Pharma has announced that they have settled with two plaintiff groups uh, in US against the ongoing litigation, which was uh, in relation to the Renvaxi's uh, drugs. Now, the Sun Pharma uh, has decided to pay around $485 million to end this uh, litigation, uh, though this is marginal negative. 
but we believe that this clears the future uncertainty about the company and uh, that is why we don't see this is as a major uh, uh, negative development for the company if uh, on this news the stock reacts negatively uh, then it could be an opportunity to buy uh, as we believe that the operation operationally the company is doing well and the speciality portfolio of the company is on the right track uh, another news is that the government has imposed curbs on exports of hydrofluorocarbons, which is used in refrigeration and air conditioning. Around 15 days back, a government had also imposed curbs on uh, Im uh, on imports of the same uh, chemicals. Now, manufacturers have to seek a license and permission from the government to import or export this chemical. This is marginal negative uh, for SRF and Naveen Floro, mainly for SRF because they are mostly involved in the exports of, uh, of uh, hydrofluorocarbons. Uh, so that's it from, from me. Thank you. Yeah, uh, another news uh, relating to Z. Uh, Invesco, uh, which has won uh, two days back case against uh, uh, G for removal of Punit Koenka and uh, conducting EGM, has now withdrawn the uh, his stand, their stand of uh, opposing the deal, and uh, now has indicated that they are in support of the deal with uh, Sony. So now seems that uh, the deal uh, with uh, G and Sony is likely to go through. Uh, be, being uh, Invesco was having around 18% holding and uh, uh, company was needing around 75% uh, uh, special resolution and 75% voting for go through of this deal that was uh, necessary. And now the things are clear. So what we see that uh, this is a uh, very good positive for the Z entertainment. We had seen uh, Z moving up to around 350 in expectation of th this deal. and. Uh, with all these concerns, it has came down. And now uh, what we see that uh, the stock can again rebound uh, uh, in this because of this news. Uh, the uh, post this deal, uh, the company will become uh, a company of Sony. And uh, right now the sale is trading at around 16 times uh, one year forward earning, which is uh, considering the parentage of Sony looks quite attractive. So looks positive for Z. Apart from that, uh, today morning, uh, Ruchi Soya IPO is opening up, FPO, sorry. Uh, uh, we, one should not uh, take into account the current listed price. Uh, the offer price is at around, the uh, upper end is around 650 rupees. Uh, company is uh, mainly into oil, uh, uh, oil marketing companies, uh, oil, uh, like uh, uh, Ruchi brand, which they sell. It's uh, uh, the company was uh, in NCLT and got acquired by Patanjali Group. Uh, but uh, uh, the Patanjali brands uh, uh, are separate, and uh, here uh, majorly Ruchi and uh, Nutrella brand is being sold. And uh, uh, some uh, uh, food brand uh, Patanjali has transferred to this company is uh, related to biscuits and noodles. And company has given indication that the food business of Patanjali will be transferred into this. Uh, the major revenue as of now comes from almost around 85% revenue comes from uh, uh, the oil segment, uh, uh, which wherein they play on the volume side, uh, wherein uh, the sales growth is also uh, or over 25-30%. In last uh, last year and also in first half of this year, so uh, oil uh, they purchase try to purchase at a lower end of the price and uh, sell the and also selling prices also compared to market is lower. Uh, so they play more on a volume and distribution rather than brand. Uh, and apart from that, uh, if you see the uh, the other food businesses and all are doing okay, nothing uh, so specific in that. Uh, apart from that, they have uh, one uh, uh, farming, uh, one, uh, uh, apart from that, they also have uh, uh, some power business, uh, wind farm business, which is also very small. 
so in all uh, uh, in all if we see uh, the results uh, post acquisition has shown some improvement uh, fy21 the revenue growth was around 24% and uh, in the first 6 month also they had uh, continued their revenue growth uh, uh, by almost around the uh, around over uh, 30% and ebitda margin has also shown some improvement in uh, fy21 to 6% and uh, now in first half it is uh, maintaining that ebitda margins uh, considering uh, uh, the brand image is not so great for ruchi and uh, uh, the say uh, the company is uh, doing around uh, 14 15% uh, Uh, return on equity and cash generation to market cap is also not so great uh, we feel that uh, the uh, uh, the outlook from here is more of a neutral at uh, the issue price uh, and uh, uh, if someone is looking for more than one or two year may look at the company but the near term we see some uh, uh, the stock is offered at a fairly price the stock is offered at somewhere around uh, Uh, 30 times uh, price to earning uh, on first half annualized earning so overall 34 times so overall we recommend to uh, we are more of a neutral on the stock so that's all from us uh, thank you very much and have a good day subscribe to our youtube channel for in depth interviews of india inc and press the bell icon so that you do not miss our updates